Join us September 25th, 26th, and 27th for a three-day special streaming event, Strange Realities, to push the limits of your reality. Featuring authors, academics, researchers, occultists, experiencers, podcasters, and practitioners. All presenting fresh cutting edge material and research. Streaming live. Featuring presentations by Brent Reigns, editor of Alternate Perceptions Magazine. Aaron Gullius, host of the Saucer Life Podcast. David Metcalf, writer and researcher. Alan Greenfield, author of Secret Cipher of the Euphonauts. Stephanie Quick, writer and blogger. Red Pill Junkie, 14 researcher and explorer. Tim Banal, host of Banal of America. Guy Malone, iconoclast and troublemaker. Timothy Ritter, host of Strange Familiars. Kiki Dombrowski, author and practitioner. Greg Bishop, author of Project Beta. Ginny Ashford, host of 13 O'Clock. Recluse, host of The Farm. Jack Montgomery, Folk Magic. Joshua Cutchin, author of Thieves in the Night. Reverend Michael Carter, Alien Contact Experiencer. Dr. Future, host of Future Quake. Tony Kale, author of Memphis Hoodoo. Rin Collier, Occultist. Soraya Ascap, host of Where Did the Road Go? John Tinney, Ghost Stalkers in Hell. All three days, only $20. Tickets and info available at strangerealitiesconference.com. Brought to you by the Conspiranormal Podcast. Conspiranormal.com. Strange realities. when the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains became known as the home of Nobby. This Bigfoot-like creature was sighted multiple times in Cleveland County, North Carolina. Named after Carpenter's Knob, Nobby became quite the spectacle for newspapers, radio stations, and television shows alike. On the morning of December 21st, 88-year-old Minnie Cook had one of the first encounters with Nobby. 
while letting her dog outside, she noticed a six-foot-tall Bigfoot-like creature near the woods of her home. She observed it had a small head, flat face, and black fur. Reminiscent of an ape's movement, Nobby walked with a wobbly gait. He stood on two legs before dropping down to all fours. Nobby seemed inquisitive as well, watching Cook and her dog for a while before ambling back into the wood line. According to reports, Minnie was terrified, and she never left her home again without her trusty rifle by her side. Other residents sighted the creature around the same time, and most of the initial sightings seemed rather tame. Neighbors reported seeing it calmly eating holly berries, seemingly paying no mind to the humans gawking at it. Due to the seemingly non-threatening nature of the first reports, those who claimed to see Nobby became a bit of a laughing stock for a short period of time. It was not long, however, before those who were laughing stopped finding humor in the creature. In the coming days and weeks, reports evolved from a peaceful Nobby to one that was breaking into buildings and causing damage. Over 16 sightings were reported during the span of a month. Forrest Price was out walking his property when he discovered one of his adult goats had been an unfortunate inn. It was dead, its neck snapped. Price was certain Nobby was responsible. A search team was called into action. Trucks full of people arrived at the scene and spent the overnight hours heavily scouring the area for evidence. Their search was fruitful. Tracks were discovered leading from Price's property to an animal's den a few miles away. Nobby hysteria reached a fever pitch within a short period of time. Radio stations camped out in the area doing live broadcast while residents combed the woods looking for any signs of Nobby. A song was even made in his honor and played regularly on local stations. Reports of sightings, however, seemed to suddenly drop off in the early months of 1979. The media became preoccupied with other things and Nobby's name faded from the news. For nearly 30 years, Nobby was not widely discussed by those outside the community. However, a resurgence of Bigfoot sightings changed that. Encounters occurred in the same area Nobby frequented in the decades prior. Nobby's name was once again in the media. This time, however, some witnesses reported that if this was Nobby, it had grown a few feet taller. Further evidence suggested that the recent sightings were indeed an older Nobby. Reports noted that the creature now had a long gray beard which stretched to his navel. Nobby may appear older, but it is still certainly not a beast to anger. Attacks on animals and pets have continued. Just like the earliest reports of guttural screams that can be heard for miles, Nobby still alerts those to his presence with his chilling sounds. Modern day reports describe a creature that communicates with low growls mixed with high pitched screeches. Nobby has become a permanent part of the history and folklore of the region. Taking up residence since December of 1978, Nobby continues to be one of the most intriguing legends of Cleveland County, North Carolina. One sunny afternoon, round about the first of June, he was lying there, kicked back, cooling off in the shade. Spitting shaw and swatting flies, the force swirled before his eyes as he sipped on some fresh Kaiser Kool Aid. When his hounds began to pitch a fit, he turned and got a glimpse of it. He wasn't sure just what he saw standing there. Well, he'd heard the legend throughout the hills that a monster lurked around him still, but he never thought it'd have such lovely hair. Looks like Nobby's back, ancient, seen the tracks, 